All right, so we're still in section 8.3. In class the other day, we talked about what to do if you had sines and cosines and one of them had an odd power. Well, what do you do if uh, you have something like this, integral sine squared x dx, where you only have even powers? <clears throat> well, that's where these, these power reduction formulas come in. So notice what this, these allow you to do. They allow you to start with an even power reduce it so that you have a power of 1. The penalty is, of course, you get this little 2x and you get this 1 half. So this becomes integral 1 minus cosine 2x over 2 dx, which I'm going to split up a little bit. That's integral 1 half minus 1 half cosine 2x dx. So just split it on the numerator. 1 over 2 is a half, and then there's a 1 there. 1 over 2 is still a half. And now we integrate both parts. This is 1 half x minus 1 half. When we integrate this cosine, because of this 2, we're going to get another 1 half. And then it will be sine 2x plus c. All right, well, that seems pretty uh, nice and cozy, I guess. It does get worse. Let me give you an example. What if we had integral? sine squared x, cosine squared x, dx. Again, the issue is that they are both even powers. So what we have to do is use the power reduction formulas for each one. So it's 1 minus cosine 2x over 2 times 1 plus cosine 2x over 2. I'm going to take both of these 2's and just pull them out front, so that's 1 quarter integral 1 minus cosine 2x times 1 plus cosine 2x. The issue now is that I still have multiplication here. i got to get rid of that multiplication. This is one of the rare times where FOIL is actually a good idea, so we're going to do that. 1 quarter integral 1 now notice what's going to happen here. On the outside, we're going to have a cosine 2x. On the inside, we're going to have a negative cosine 2x. These two things are conjugates. Exactly the same, except one's a minus, one's a plus. So the middle two terms go away. And then it's minus cosine squared 2x. But look what we have. We did a whole bunch of work. We still have cosine with an even power. So we actually need to do that power reduction formula again. And this is going to happen very often in these problems. You'll do the power reduction formulas. Then you'll have to multiply some stuff together like we did here. <coughs> and then you'll have to do the <coughs> power reduction formula again. So look what happens. When this is an x, this becomes a 2x. When this is a 2x, it's going to become a 4x. It doubles every time. So this is going to be 1 plus cosine 4x over 2. All right, so just a small amount of little algebra here, and then we'll integrate. So again, I'm going to split this. This is going to be 1 minus a half. That's a half. Minus 1 half cosine 4x dx. So final answer is we got this 1 quarter, then we have a 1 half x, and when we integrate this because of this 4, we'll still have that 1 half, but because of this 4, we'll have a 1 fourth sine 4x four plus c. All right, now let's talk about tangents and secants. We're going to use these two formulas. Now, the rules we're going to do for tangents and secants would be exactly the same rule as cotangents and cosecants. Um, and it, well, I'll just write them down, I suppose. You've got the um, exact same formulas. So these came from sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. If I, div I got these by taking this and dividing by cosine squared, if I take this formula and divide by sine squared, I get 1 plus cotangent squared x equals cosecant squared x. 
So you really have the same formulas, and the rules we're going to talk about are exactly the same for cotangents and cosecants. All right, so what we're going to be looking at, we're going to be looking at something integral, tangent to the m, secant to the n, dx. All right, like there were for sines and cosines, there'll be three rules. Rule number one, if n is even, so in other words, if the secant has an even power, save secant squared x, convert everything to tangent x, let u be tangent x. Because the derivative of tangent will give us secant squared. So that's why we're saving a secant squared to make this u substitution. All right, so that's rule number one. Rule number two, if m is odd, save secant x tan x, convert convert everything to uh, secant x and let u be secant x. And again, the idea is the derivative of secant will give us secant tangent. Rule three, if neither of those two things happen, uh, hope and pray. Well, <laughs> we can do better than that. Um, there's some ideas. Try converting everything to sine x and cosine x, or try integration by parts. And we saw that the other day with one of our problems. For example, of the integral of secant cubed x dx. That was an integration by parts problem. It does not fit either of these two patterns. It doesn't have an even secant, and, well, it didn't have any tangent at all. All right, so these rules are a little bit more complicated than the rules for sines and cosines, but th the way to remember it is what you want your u's to be. If I want u to be tangent, then I need a secant squared. So you're looking for even secants. Or if I want u to be secant, I'm looking for the derivative to be a secant tangent. So I want odd tangents. All right, let me grab a couple problems out of the book here and see what we have. Integral secant to the sixth of four x Tangent squared, 4x, dx. All right, well, what we see here is that we're in the first situation. Secant is even. So I'm going to take this integral, and I'm going to save a secant squared of 4x. And then left over, I would have secant to the fourth of 4x. Tangent squared of 4x, dx. So this is the one I'm saving, saving the secant squared. I need to convert this one. So I go back and I look here. Secant squared is tangent squared plus one. But since I have a fourth power there, I'm actually gonna have the integral of secant squared four x. Then I'll have tangent squared four x plus one. And that whole thing will be squared. This is secant to the fourth is secant squared, squared. So here's my secant squared, and then I'm squaring it again. And then I've got tangent squared of 4x dx. All right, so what we've done, we've used our trig identities to set up so that u substitution will now work. u is going to be tangent 4x, 
du is 4 secant squared 4x dx. So because of this 4, I'm going to need a 1 fourth integral. It's going to be u squared plus 1 squared times u squared du. Foil this thing out. That's 1 quarter integral u to the 4th plus 2u squared plus 1. And then that's times u squared du. So it's 1 fourth integral u to the 6th plus 2u to the 4th plus u squared du. So final answer, I've got the 1 quarter. Then I'm going to have 1 seventh tangent to the seventh of 4x plus two fifths tangent to the fifth of 4x plus one third tangent cubed 4x plus c.